these men want me to go to Hollywood. Hollywood? Yeah, yeah. Elizabeth so Taylor is dead, and he said they're looking for a stand in to pay the, the life and times of Elizabeth Taylor. And they're to ask me, I'm, I'm on two minds to tell you. Street truth. today, Hollywood tomorrow? I, I, I just, I'm on two minds whether to go or not. Well, there was Elizabeth Taylor's gone, you might get a. Uh, I, I guess, a, I really, I guess a good picture. No, three, three, me three, 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 three. But I get you a bag. No, no, Taylor's gone, you might get a parent or a parent. I mean, today don't we always have to Money's not everything. Yeah. Right I think if you're light as hard, it's far better than having a heavy pocket. To be light as hard, isn't that right, sir? That's it. Now, me old flower, look. Yeah, now, seven years. I don't know. Alright. Ash, you're a decent man. Well, I have it, but I very seldom has it. <laughs> God bless. <laughs> Thank you. Whoa! I hope you don't think I'm going to talk common because I'm not. I sold newspapers first when I was a child. I sold newspapers because my mummy had the newspaper picture around at work. One side of the GPO was my sister and the other side was my mummy's papers. And then I came around here to sell for, with my pal, Carmel Mooney, who I married her brother, who she became my bridesmaid. And when she was getting married, I became her mate from Nirvana. So I'm in Mare Street, years, so I'll be 75 my next birthday. And I'm in Mare Street since I was 60. The streets has gone a bit dilapidated, but it'll get better because it couldn't get worse. So it has to get better. Isn't that right, son? Yeah. Ah, she, there was loads of them used to come up and down here. The Dice Man and Johnny Forty Coach and Brendan Bean was the, 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 the best character of all. Brendan Bean was gas. But he'd come, he'd come out and he used to go in, that was Handlin's. That was Handlin's fish shop. And he used to go in and buy the, the, the salmon, the salmon and hammond. Uh, handlings, and he used to buy the fish over there after that girl's mother, Molly Buckley, if he had gone to have some kind of a shindy, I suppose, that night. And he often sat down on the curb and he'd say, Come, me old Scalera, he had grand old sayings, you know, yeah. And he'd say, well, Who was down today? Who was down today? Tell me, it was Johnny Ford to coach around. He was a Dubliner, a true blue Dubliner, Brendan Bean. Really, he was, honest to God. He was very nice. Don't mind him. Don't mind him. He's an immigrant and he's illegal, so I could get him deported. And he tells you that he's Chinese, but he's really Japanese. And his granddad bombed Pearl Harbor in 1941. On the 7th of December, 1941, his grandfather led the raid to America that bombed America. He did. That was his granddad. I'm only joking. He, he goes mad when I tell him he's not Chinese. But I told him that his granddad did bomb Pearl Harbor. Is there anything else you'd like to know, son? Oh, oh, there's lots of funny stories, but some of them is very rude. I wouldn't express them, son. You know, I wouldn't. Nah, no, I wouldn't, honest to God. You, no, you, you, no, some of them is very, very rude. I wouldn't, I wouldn't express. Don't even ask me to go there, son. But so there's just grand gas stories that took place. Uh, as I told you about Brendan Bean, and any film star that never came to Dublin, they always had a, 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 a mug that cascade down Mary Street. Uh, they, were very popular, the people in Mercerys, and Mercerys itself, because they all used to come down and we say, how are you? Give us a free ticket for your fixture. You know, we'd be down with only El Kamali talk. It wouldn't be that we'd, we'd talk like that at any given time. We just used to be down. They used to be delighted with us, but what we had to say, you know what I mean? we say, I've seen you in Gamma, oh, Clark Abel, I love him. I'd love Clark Abel to come down here. <laughs> no, he didn't, though. Because if Clark Abel had to come down here, I'd have left Ireland and I'd have gone off to Omega. I wouldn't have been in Ireland anymore. They're very rude. It's no use of waiting. So I had to tell her she's rude because she is rude. You know that. And I wouldn't say it as if it wasn't so. I have to watch that bike go down with somebody who owns it. I noticed that a lot of the stalls here have fruit or fish. Why in particular do you have chocolate? Why would you pick chocolate? Yeah, well, you see, in 1990, I had an awful tragedy in my life. My son, 22 years of age, died. He died in Lourdes. He worked there for eight years in Lourdes, helping the sick with the Dublin Dias and pilgrimage to Lourdes. And him, him and his dad, Lord of Mercy and his dad, now dead, and his sister, Bridges, and he said the four Bridges to go off to Lourdes. And we worked in the hospital in Lourdes, and I didn't work. Push, my, my husband used to push the wheelchairs around. But my son worked there, but he was a brand new asthma. And he took, he was had been working in the hospital at two o'clock that morning. And he came back to the hotel and he took a massive, irreversible 
asthmatic attack. And he died in my arms. Did you ever see that statue, the Piatta? What it looks like? Well, that's he was kneeling down as he's bed saying his prayers. And um, I was in the next room and his pal came in and said, quick, Martin, is it, Martin was his name, my beloved son. Martin is in the asthmatic attack. And I ran into the room next door to number 19. I was in number 20 and went to number 19. And he was in a kneeling position, and I knelt down beside him, and he just turned over into me. It was, it was a lovely September day over the road. He was in his, his jocks, and he turned over, and he fell into my arms, and he died. At 22 years of age, the grandest boy and he mother ever, ever had. No. And that's me sorrow, and that's how I used to buy the fruit and veg. When I finally came back out to Mary Street, I used to buy the fruit and veg, and it was go. It was all went bad because I'd be all right today. I'd be great today. Go down the market, buy stuff, and then I wouldn't be all right. I've got maybe a week, two weeks, and the stuff used to go bad. So I was giving up Mary Street, and Miss McInerney was over the street at the time. She was a, one of the workers from the corporation. She was, and she said, "Get into a commodity that won't go bad on you." So I said, "What commodity was that?" I said, "Miss McInerney," and she said, "Get into confectionery." And that's how I got into confectionery. Now, when I'm not feeling up to it, that's how yesterday, you know, I had my grandson down, and he's caught Martin too. And I wouldn't swap a day with Martin for Mercy for the world. So that's how I was, uh, it wasn't out yesterday. I'm sorry about that, I told you I would be. No, yeah. So that's the, that's the story of my life. I, I'll never get over the death of my son. I have seven sisters dead. I've my brother dead, my mother and father is dead, my husband is dead. I've loads of nephews and nieces, some of them died of drug abuse, my mother, dead. But no sorrow is like the sorrow from the loss of my son. As the Blessed Virgin Mary said at Calvary, no sorrow is like unto mine. She said that when her son was crucified. But no sorrow was like unto mine when my son died in my arms. I'm getting sentimental now. Do you ever have any advice for people? I take one day at a time, son. Archbishop O'Connell told me that in Lourdes, because he was there when Martin died. He said, remember now, he said, Bernadette. My name is Bernie, but he called me Bernadette. Remember Bernadette? He said, to take one day at a time, live today, and he said, let tomorrow take care of itself. It's in the, it's in the future. He said, and then when tomorrow comes, he said, live for the next day. And that's what I do, I take one day at a time. But I talk to my son every day, every day, 20 years, over 20 years dead. And I, every day, this morning I was coming out and I blessed myself the Holy Water and I said, Martin, son, I'm going now, I'll see you when I come in, as if he was there. And that's keeping me sane. Believe it or not, talking to him every day is keeping me sane. Do you think I'm mental? No, okay, okay, okay. It must be great though here, I mean, every day is different. And see, uh, when you come, uh, being, being out here, that's another reason why I wouldn't, being out here, I meet in the public. Such as yourselves and all like that. And I wouldn't be rude to nobody. I try not to be rude. Maybe I am rude in my own little way, but I try not to be rude to anyone. And uh, I love meeting the public. I love meeting the people. As I said, I need that little bit of diversion in my life. <laughs>